Welcome back to College Hill Farm. Well, today we're in the workshop, and what we're going to do today is, uh, you know, we melted some blue barrels. It's old, rainy, dreary winter day. It's colder than blazes, but it's raining. So that just makes that cold just seep into my old bones. So what we're going to do today is we're going to work out here in the shop and uh, continue with our blue barrel series. I'm going to go ahead and make a, uh, a playlist about melting and machining and doing stuff to blue barrels, but today I'm going to try machining it with our homemade meal. So I'll try and speed the video up. This won't be like the tractor shed video where we, uh, where we do things and let you see it in real time. Uh, this will be more along the lines of uh, a fun video. I'll speed it up where the milling process is going on and then we'll discuss about does the plastic delaminate? Does it come apart? Does it, uh, does it machine well? Can you sand it? Okay, all that kind of stuff that goes with melting these blue barrels. I've got a good chunk that I want to square up and that's where we'll start today. Right now, this has got this uh, a router bit in it, so I want to take that out. I was using that to carve wood with. Now, let's get this wooden top off. Uh, this is good for carving and stuff. But it's not good. It's not going to be good to hold that plastic. Let me show you the plastic. Right here is a piece of that laminated plastic. You can see that there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sheets of plastic cutoffs from those blue barrels and they've all been stuck together there. What I want to do today is square it up. Now I've got two pieces. So these have been cut. This is a good cut straight, good straight cut. It cuts really good on my radial arm saw. So a regular saw cuts this really good. It's rough like wood is when you cut it with a saw, but it does a really good job. So let's get this table off and then we'll get started. Okay, let's look at my mill setup here. What I've got, I've got a Vivor crossfeed table. Uh, I don't remember where this this drill press clamp came from. I've had it for years, probably 30 years, and I don't remember where it came from, but I'm using it. Uh, got this crossfeed table. Now, one thing about this Vivor crossfeed table, let me show you, and I couldn't do anything about it without remachining it and I didn't have a machine to do it when the crossfeed table was off. This crossfeed table has got about 35 thousandths worth of play up and down. Okay, the way I'm compensating for that is right here, right there is a 35 thousandths, pick it up here, is a 35 thousandths feeler gauge that sits and I'm one on this side one on each side they sit right in there like that one on this side and one on this side and what I can do is as I roll this those feeler gauges it just slides on them okay they're oiled up good and it just slides of course you can see it's rusting a little bit that's okay and it slides on them real good Every now and then one will slip out a little bit and I have to put it back, but it holds that thing pretty solid. So I'm pleased with that. It's working out pretty good. So let's see what we can do to mill some plastic. Okay, I love my little wood stove. It is uh, 68 degrees in here. Uh, it's 39 outside when I came out an hour later it's 68 degrees in here and this whole shop is just a carport with sides on it and the metal roof is still exposed okay but it's yeah 
I love my little wood stove and it'll keep at that temperature on the amount of wood I just put in there for four or five hours so it's almost nothing to operate so anyway let's get started at this let's look at the mill here for a second some more now of course it's just a drill press okay so this is a homemade milling operation right here this is just a piece of uh, sheet protector and there's one right here the same way right up here the same way they're just held on with these niobium maggot mag maggots magnets they're just held on with those niobium magnets and what they do is they keep the uh, keep the chips and stuff off the screws in my feed table so that's their whole purpose so let's get this first one up but before I do that I want to use a uh, I'm just going to use a flat router bit that's what I'm going to use to do the first machining here of these and then I'll switch to a two flute and a four flute regular machining bits now the thing about this is somebody told me sent me a, a message and said that uh, this chuck on the jaw said I should probably invest in a uh, in a chuck and they're probably exactly right uh, I should probably invest in uh, one of those chucks that that uh, that just fits up in and you tighten it and it fits all the way around but I don't have the money for that right now I couldn't find one at a at a reasonable price that would fit the Morris taper up up in here so that's what I'm not doing now there's my router bit chucked up uh, so let me pull you up here a little bit more where you can see what's about to happen pay no attention to this mess behind me I got a lot of work to do I've been doing so much work on that uh, on the tractor shed that my that my little workshop has languished a little so now what I'm gonna do the base of this vise is flat flat with a square with this so if I machine this off with the base of the vise with this fit sitting flat on the base of the vise it ought to be machined flat so now what I've got my what I've got this set at right at the minute is the maximum speed uh, about 4800 rpms okay it's not hardly 5000 rpms a router turns it about 10,000 and a table saw about 10,000 but we're gonna see if this router bit will cut this so let's start with that Now, that router bit is cutting that like nobody's business, and it feels pretty clean. I wonder if I could use a bigger router bit, so take a bigger bite. So, that's the next step. I'm going to get a bigger router bit and see if I can use it instead. Okay, it's not hot. That little Vivor table is handy as it can be. Okay, I'll get another router bit and come back to you. Okay, I thought I had a half inch router bit, but I don't. I've got a three quarter and a, uh, I don't know where my half is. It's probably in a router somewhere <laughs> put up around here, but a three quarter and a three eighths. Uh, the one I was using was a quarter. You can see the difference in the three. Here's the one I was using in the middle. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put in this three quarter and see if I can clear this with it. Where's my. 
Well, what I do with it? I've got a thing where I can keep this where I don't lose it, but I somehow I can't seem to pay attention to what I've done with it. Yeah, I do it in all three of them. Maybe I've got OCD. I don't know. I don't think so. All right. Now, so I don't have to run this up and down all the time, I'm going to bring it down like that and lock this into place. As soon as I find my big screwdriver, that's the way it goes. All right, just a minute. Okay, I've got it locked down. Let's see how this machines. Okay, there it is. Looks pretty pretty smooth. It don't feel real smooth. So I'm gonna machine this on down and see what comes up. Are moving a little. I had to tighten my little set screws up. They're set screws for the vise under there. Now, okay, let's go a little deeper. Open my thing up here. See how far down I want to go. Let's go down about that far. Let's take off about a half inch. Sometimes it does that. <clears throat> now let's see if I can lock that in. Or it came back out. Okay. Try it again. There it is. That feels pretty smooth. I got a jagged part I missed right there. But that feels pretty smooth. And if you look, it's not offering to delaminate at the edges. Okay, just using the router bit. 
Now let's switch over and use a, a fluted bit like you used to cut metal with. And that'll, that may tell us the tale. I'm going to start off with a half inch two flute mill. So, get this baby opened up. Like I said, somebody told me that, that these mills are real hardened and it's hard for this to get a bite on them and I need that collet to chuck and that's probably true. But I've been able to find a collet in my price range. You know what I mean? Price range is everything and, and uh, I haven't been able to find one. I'll find one. I'll find one at a flea market or a junk store or something somewhere. But until then, I'll just keep doing it this way. Uh, steel don't do real good on this mill. Uh, I think it's the, the table more so than the, than the cutter. Uh, it could be that the cutter to cut steel needs higher, higher RPMs. It does great on aluminum. It does great on uh, copper and brass. Uh, I mean great. You see what it's doing on this plastic. Now, let's get this set in here. Like that. Run it over. Put it back over here where you can see good. Run it over. And then I'm going to bring this down to the level it was at. So we'll just cut this tip off at the same level that we did the other. So let's see, where's my wrench? There's my wrench. Get the the depth set. Right there. Got my depth set so it matches the other depth. It's locked in. Let's see what we can do. All right, is that any smoother? Well, I believe it might be just a little bit smoother. So let's go down a little more. And uh, no, I didn't. Didn't get it locked in. Go down a little bit and let this cut some enough to test and see if it's going to be better or worse. Now, back it out all the way out. Still out a little more. Okay, let's see how that does. Now, here's how it compares. This is the two flute bit. This is the router bit. To be honest, the router bit is actually made a smoother surface than this two flute milling bit. 
So now let's go to a four flute milling bit and see how it does. Okay, this is a 5 8 uh, four flute bit. It's got four cutters on the bottom. The other one had two. The uh, so here's an example. This is the this is the router bit. It only has two cutters, one on each side. And here's a two flute mill bit. It only has two cutters. This one has four cutters. It's four flutes. Okay, we're going to see if it will make. I've set the depth. But I'm going to keep the router surface over here because the router surface so far was cleaner and smoother than the other. So let's do that. Okay, here's what the four flute did. It's still pretty rough. The router bit has made it a whole lot smoother. I mean, a lot. It's amazing how much smoother the router bit did than the mill bit. Of course, mill bits are for metal. Router bits are not going to do good on steel. They're going to fly apart. But these are that was a carbide tipped router bit. Carbide tipped router bit versus regular metal cutting bits two flute and four flute the router bit outdid both of them as far as cutting speed and everything the router bit outdid both of them just saying okay now we want to see how much uh, if this will delaminate I've got a lot of questions will this delaminate if you mill down into this part, will it chip out? And I want to know that too. I want to know, will it, will it hold up if I cut down into these laminates? And that will let me know if this will allow me to do that. So I'm going to set it up over here now that we got these two nice uh, sides that are, that are parallel. I can put it here in my vise and put this thing in there and mill down I'll try and mill down to where I, I'm kind of in between levels to make sure that it's all stuck together so let's do that now okay you can see where I've went down between the levels see uh, a white on one part and blue on the other white on one part blue on the other I've gone all the way through one whole piece and went down to where into the second piece see how it was in there so those are adhered together perfect so they are just like one solid sheet of plastic down in there so these are going to be good you can put them as thick as you want I can make one and a half inch thick plastic with this this one took one two three four five six seven eight nine it took nine pieces is that right count that again one two three four five six six pieces it took six pieces six pieces raw was uh, was an inch but six pieces uh, six pieces I get it out but six pieces compressed was only like seven eighths of an inch it compressed like an eighth of an inch on me so if I wanted to get a full inch I would need to put in eight or nine pieces and then mill it to the size that I needed okay but this is going to allow me to make this as uh, thick as I want to it took an hour to melt this or two hours to melt this to where it would adhere together like this but two hours it didn't put out any fumes 
nothing. 300 degrees, two hours. All right? You don't have to turn it up anymore, but you do have to put compression on it to make it stick together. Okay. Okay. That is going to be a game changer here on the homestead. It's going to allow me to do a whole lot of different stuff. Uh, yeah. Totally, totally, totally going to be worth every penny that I've invested in this, which is about nothing. Okay. I had a bunch of blue barrels. I bought an $8 uh, toaster oven. And I bought two or three or four dollars worth of uh, metal pans. Yeah. And I had... I've been working on the mill to do plastic and alum, aluminum and brass and maybe a little steel. It'll drill steel good, but it don't. I can drill steel good with it and place it, but it's just not really good. That Vivor table just doesn't hold up to the steel. It wants to chatter no matter what I do to it. I've done everything in the world to it. It still wants to chatter. If I'm drilling straight down, it does fine. But that side to side, it wants to chatter. And it may be a, a flaw in the head of this drill press, too. Okay, that may be a, a, a lacking in the drill press. But it does fine to the thousands on a piece of brass or a piece of aluminum. Okay, it does real good with that. I wanted to see how it did with this plastic. And I needed to know if this plastic would delaminate and how well, how smooth it would make it. The truth is, a router bit makes it a whole lot smoother than a mill, than a mill bit, which is kind of cool to me. Uh, so that means I can mill this on, right on this with a router, and I bet I can hand do it, just like carving wood, just like doing the wood carvings. You saw in a previous video, me doing the wood carvings, I'd say I could carve this exactly the same way. Okay? Now, if you like this stuff, this homesteading, do-it-yourself kind of thing, be certain to come on out to the channel and subscribe. We do this homesteading stuff every week, sometimes one, sometimes five videos. just depends on what's going on in the homestead that week. Now, if you hit the little bell when you come to the channel, it'll be right up here. Uh, it'll notify you when we upload a video. We upload on Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. Now, it's time for me to get on to the next thing.